Good morning, friends. I'm here with our daily Disney devotional. Thank you for joining me. Today we're going to be reading number 77, which is Walt Disney Presents. We have but one more show to go here in the Hollywood Studios. But before we get there, there's one more attraction I want to talk about. It's an attraction unlike any other. It's not a ride or a show, although there is a film involved. Some people may skip it. Some people may not even know about it. Some people may think it's a waste of time. I strongly disagree. This attraction is one of the most important at this park or of any park for that matter. It's not a thrilling ride or an exciting show, but it's an important and, oh, but it's important and it needs to be part of Disney. It's about all the history of the man who was Walt Disney. It's called Walt Disney Presents. It's an exhibit on Mickey Avenue in Hollywood Studios all about the man, Walt Disney. It's a display of his personal possessions, his ideas, visions, and dreams for all to see. It's a room full of all the documented history of Walt Disney and the path he took to bring Disney franchise to life. It also includes previews for some upcoming additions, refurbishments, and new attractions. It's a fascinating walk through his life, and I tend to learn something new each time I visit. Walt Disney Presents opened as One Man's Dream on October 1, 2001. It's just recently changed its name in the fall of 2017. It was created and opened for what would have been Walt Disney's 100th birthday. And it was part of the 100 Years of Magic celebration at Disney in 2001. Walt was born in 1901. Wow, that's just so long ago. <laughs> and he died in 1966, just a few days after his 65th birthday. The attraction includes a large room full of nearly 400 items and a display all about Walt Disney. It also includes a 15 minute film about him as well. The film was originally hosted by Michael Eisner, who is the CEO of Disney at the time of opening. When Eisner left that role, the film was changed and it is now hosted by Julie Andrews, who is of course, Mary Poppins herself. The exhibit also includes several models of rides, lands, and various parts of Disney. <clears throat> There is even a model of Main Street USA in the Magic Kingdom. In addition, you can see Walt Disney's Oscars that he won for Snow White and 20 Leagues Under the Sea. He won a total of 48 Oscars as well as seven Emmy Awards. <coughs> I'm so sorry. Excuse me. It is said that while inside the attraction, you can find a cast member and ask them a trivia question about Walt Disney. If you get the answers correct, you get a special certificate. Walt Disney only went to one year of high school. Uh-uh, before dropping out? Okay, I did not know that. For that reason, many might have considered him lazy or a failure. But I'd say he proved everyone wrong. He grew his famous mustache at age 25 and was never without it after that. Some other interesting things you'll see inside this is his very own desk from second grade with WD that he carved into it. <laughs> you'll also see a clock that has stopped at 930 the time of his death. When Disney Imagineers decided to plan and open this attraction, they had all the items flown in on a giant FedEx Airbus and all the items were carefully monitored. There are a couple ways that people do this attraction. Some do a quick walkthrough and are done in five to 10 minutes. Others prefer to take their time and really read and focus on the various items. I prefer the latter. I also preferred the former title, One Man's Dream, because that's what it really was. Walt Disney had a dream. What about you? Do you have a dream? That's a line from a great song in Tangled. 
I think it's pretty safe to say that in life, most people have dreams. Many people spend hours daydreaming about what they want to become or accomplish in life. Unfortunately, most of these dreams tend to fall by the wayside and are never brought to life. While Disney was the exception to the rule, he had these dreams early on and worked very hard to make them a reality. Throughout my life, whether in school or at a job or in my personal walk, I have often been advised to have goals. I've even been told that it's a good practice to literally write down your goals, make them attainable and measurable and stick to them. I agree that it's important and I challenge you to do the same. In Philippians 3, 13 through 14, Paul talks about goals. He talks about forgetting what is behind and working towards what is ahead. He also mentions the ultimate goal of heaven. When I used to cro coach cross country, I once had a runner at the beginning of the season tell me he was gonna win an award at the end of the season. He didn't brag about it or sing it in a boastful way, but it was a goal he was setting for himself to win a character award from me. And guess what? He did just that. And I certainly didn't give it to him because of what he said. I gave it to him because he worked so hard and he earned it and he deserved it. I was impressed of him. I was impressed and proud of him. He has set a goal and did what it took to accomplish it. That's what we need to do in life. I hope that you take the time to enjoy Walt Disney Presents. It's a very important attraction and it needs to remain in place. It's so important to remember the history of the man who made all of this come true. Hopefully it will inspire you to accomplish your goals and dreams as well. I also hope your main goal is like Paul, to attain heaven with your father. Proverbs 16.3 says, if we commit to the Lord, whatever we do, he will establish our plans. That means that God will help us accomplish our goals if we are involved with him. If I commit today to set goals and work hard to accomplish them, accomplish them and involve God in every step of the process, he will reward us. Please join me in doing the same. Bye guys, I will see you tomorrow.